friendly to Wisconsin. The Ice Age kind of knocked most of the, our ability to rock climb out. People are um, shocked. Um, they are intrigued mostly. They have to recycle the water out of the quarry anyway. So, oh, approximately 20 years ago, Paul Keen came up with the idea originally to circulate that water back onto a north facing wall and make it into an ice climbing area. People are very surprised by it. Most people don't even know that ice climbing as a sport really exists. And then when they find out that it's right here in Green Bay and we have a facility like this, they're, they're very surprised. Generally people, you know, they, they associate ice climbing with, you know, something like Mount Everest or K2 or Rainier or something like that. They don't think that people can be ice climbing in Wisconsin. Wisconsin's, you know, America's dairyland. It's flat. Well, the Midwest does provide the conditions as far as the temperatures go, and we live in an area that gets enough rain to have water, you know, in, in the ground before the winter comes, but we don't live in an area that has the actual old environment for it. The best area around here is Munising and Marquette. That area along the Pictured Rock shoreline, there's ice climbing there. Other than that, the next best place to go is straight north up into Canada. Not a lot of people know that uh, Michigan is a hotbed for ice climbing. It's still relatively undiscovered up here. Uh, but what makes this area so great is Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. And we have 40 miles on the mainland of a real porous sandstone. And out of that sandstone, it seeps water, which freezes in the wintertime, that makes spectacular ice climbing formations up to 200 feet high. Climbing in general as a sport in the Midwest isn't something that's tremendously popular. So if you compare it to something like mountain biking, no, there aren't as many people ice climbing as there are mountain biking. But if you travel around to the different festivals like Munising Ice Fest, you'll see that that festival draws several hundred people for the weekend to go up there and climb and try new gear and see the um, slideshows. And so people, once again, don't realize that it's here. So we have all these beautiful ice formations here but relatively uh, few people climbing it other than when the ice climbing festival is here. But you know, that's changing. So there, were, there was a time uh, two years ago when I would come here climbing and there would not be a single car in the parking lot. And so we'd have thousands of ice climbs available to climb. Now we're starting to gradually see the parking lot have two, three, four cars, a lot of them from out of state. And I think it's great. It's a great exposure for the area. And uh, I love turning people on to ice climbing and, and the Upper Peninsula. I've been rock climbing for a long time and 
ice climbing. I've always seen it in the magazines, seen it in the movies, you know, all that good stuff. And I uh, had a good friend who kind of asked me if I wanted to go one time and uh, was able to scrounge up some gear and he brought me up here and, uh, and I was hooked. A lot of it crosses over. I mean, the techniques used for rock climbing and the, posi the body position, things like that, all cross over into ice climbing. But then you add the element of the ice, which has even evolved into now a sport called mixed climbing, which uses ice and rock. But then you add the use of the tools that you need for ice, such as crampons and ice axes. Uh, I enjoy both sports, and they, they are similar, but they are different. And so, uh, come spring, I I'm ready to warm up a little bit and get on the rock and have a lot of fun. And then come fall and the snow is starting to fall in the air, I'm looking at my ice climbing gear and I can't wait to get out there. You know, I, I'm not a huge ice climber. Um, one of the things that I enjoy about rock climbing is the movement. And, um, you know, I find the ice climbing very monotonous, especially at the level in which I can ice climb at. Um, and that's really what attracts me to the sport is, you know, is just, you know, trying to, the puzzle of trying to figure out how do I get my body up stuff. So. Yeah, so I, I joke, you know, I have all this ice climbing equipment and it's been out ice climbing way more than I ever have. I think I'd prefer rock climbing just because there's a lot more variety, I think. I guess I don't really know that much about ice climbing, but it seems to me rock climbing has a lot more variety and, you know, different aspects to it than ice climbing does. It's totally different. Like, the movement style is, like, the technique used in rock climbing is totally different from ice climbing. Like, rock climbing is all about shifting your hips and, like, using your body effectively. Ice climb is like full frontal on the wall. And it's really cold and I don't like being cold. Both sports um, are uh, difficult to get into because you can't walk into a store and just buy the gear and, and teach yourself. You have to go somewhere and, and learn from somebody. Rock climbing is a little bit easier to get into because there's so many gyms available right now that's producing uh, these rock climbers. I love being outside, so I absolutely would rather be climbing outside. And uh, but you know, the gym has been become this like necessary evil. Folks have to get out of their house. They're so tired of winter. They're tired of being inside, and people start coming into the gym. And I mean, it's it's packed all the time in March and April. You know, in a place again where. You know, uh, the ice age was not real friendly to us. Um, you know, it worked. One day our heat broke in the middle of winter. It, uh, and so it was freezing in here and people were climbing with downs and, um, and so we, someone said, oh, you should have an Everest themed day. And I just thought that was brilliant. So we had, uh, you know, we came up with, okay, well, what, what would that look like? And so, you know, we, you know, came up with the uh, Kumbu ice falls, the indoor ice climbing. And, you know, if you've watched any Everest stuff, it's always the, you know, walking the ladders across the crevasse. So we just try to come up with you know, silly stuff, again, to break up the kind of the monotony of coming into here or just the winter in general. Yeah, you know, just try to make it fun because these four walls are only these four walls. At some point, you're going to put a hole in your leg with your crampons. It happens to everybody. It's inevitable. 
um, and have a you know roll of duct tape or some kind of repair tape with you for tearing up your uh, pants or something along those lines too because it's going to happen. But a medical kit's going to be a really good investment too because it's uh, something not a lot of climbers have on hand all the time and we really should with what we do. I have had people, you know, question or basically say, why would you do something like that? So yeah, there are, I mean, people that don't do it, some of them really don't understand why you would want to, you know, come out and put yourself in this situation. But I think part of it is they don't realize that it's actually much safer of a sport than they think. I think it's not, you know, ill-conceived that they think it's dangerous. Oftentimes you're climbing outdoors 80, 90 feet up from the ground, you know, or even more and that's pretty exposed and dangerous place to be you know it's also scary so I think the fear might have a big part to do with why people think it's so dangerous. Yeah a lot of people think I'm crazy a lot of people in Wisconsin have no clue what rock climbing is or what it involves they, they get it confused with mountain climbing a lot of times. But I think sports like skiing or surfing or like skateboarding are way more dangerous like climbing, you can have things be difficult but not be dangerous. Like danger isn't really what makes the sport hard. Like it's possible to climb and never really put yourself in any significant danger. Uh, I think it, a lot has to do with the media. And there's, I think, a romantic notion of, of, and this goes way back in history, when there's trouble in the mountains, it seems like the media goes there. Way more people die snowmobiling, but that's really not covered in the media. So I think there's this romantic notion with being in the mountains and, and these accidents that people that aren't involved with climbing associate rock climbing, mountaineering, ice climbing as being a, a dangerous sport, because that's their only exposure to it. Perceived danger is, is by people outside the sport is is much different than what the danger is in, once you're inside the sport. You know, top roping at Devil's Lake is not all that extreme. I mean, it's you know you have a bunch of really bomber anchors, a super strong rope. Hopefully, you have a very competent person on the other end of the rope. And, you know, there's very little arm twirling, falling. You know, no nitroglycerin blowing up things. And I think some people are really um, attracted by that danger while other people are it's very short-lived you know done properly just like any sport you know it, it it can be safe uh you know we're top roping here which is one of the safer aspects of it you're still running into falling ice falling rocks you know that kind of stuff you're wheeling around medieval looking objects you know that can jab through your any part of your body if they want to. So there's some danger involved. Um, but overall, I think it's a pretty safe sport. You know, every time you place an ice tool, there's a chance of uh, the ice dinner plating or fracturing out, and, you know, popping out and hitting you in the face, you know, so cuts on the face are, you know, are pretty common. But uh, I've been pretty fortunate over the years when I uh, first started learning the, the first classes that I took, I, I did take a couple, you know, chunks of ice in the, in the face and, you know, got cut once pretty good. Until you've done it, um, it's hard to convince someone that it's safe, but um, there's, I, I always climb with a partner and I'm very cautious because I've had a climbing accident in the past um, where I've fallen and hurt myself pretty bad. So, me especially, I am cautious, I check all my gear, and if you don't take risks, it's a very safe safe sport. I've had some people that don't even realize that you're tied to a rope with a belayer. They think you just come out here and, you know, try climbing on your own, and it doesn't work like that. So I think once people realize that there's more to it and it is safer, then they look at it differently. 
if you go into it with the mindset that everything you know you do has to be safe and there's a redundancy to climbing too when you're building anchors or when you're when you tie your knot you check it and then your belayer checks it you know you check to make sure his carabiner is locked he checks it everything is double checked before you climb and if you follow those rules it keeps climbing in general as a whole a relatively safe sport uh, fortunately I, I haven't uh, had uh, too many uh, horror stories or or that many close calls uh, and maybe I'm getting old and I can't remember them that, that well um, but I've had a lot of great stories and, and that's what keeps me coming back and uh, and you know the friendships that I develop and uh, it, it's just a lot of fun to share the sport The thing that I, I really enjoy is that problem of getting from point A, being on the ground, to finishing a route or a project. And that may happen in a single day and that would be fine. Uh, but I think the most rewarding are the ones that may take me years to do, stuff I fail on. Uh, but uh, through uh, being stubborn and, and working really hard, uh, getting on those routes and then uh, I think it's much more rewarding to finish that project that you've been working on a long time and uh, uh, fortunately I have a lot of those. <laughs> It's pretty amazing because a lot of times in climbing you get to a point where you're kind of stuck, where your level of difficulty or you, you'll have slumps where you won't be able to climb as well as, as others. So it's definitely a great feeling when you've been working towards climbing at a certain level and then finally you're able to do it. And a lot of people, they'll go to a route and they'll work a certain route over and over until they can get it. So it's definitely a rewarding sport in that aspect. When you send a route and you clip the anchors, the rope and the anchors at the top, it, it, it's just a gas. It's it's like, it's just, it's awesome. Um, and very short lived because there's always a route right next to it that's just a little bit harder and uh, just a little bit out of your reach. So, and I think that that's the cool part about the sport is it's like, woohoo! Oh, I have more work to do now. So, it's, but it's, but it's cool. I... If you can climb a ladder, you can do it here. I'm afraid of heights. That's what a better way to get over, you know, your fear of heights is give something else a try. Try to, try to just try this. And, you know, try to stay focused on what you're doing and don't worry about the rest of it. And so that's what we try to do here is try to just to make people feel like it's comfortable, you're not gonna feel silly, you know, and look around. You see all kinds of people doing it. I think people feel intimidated when they first join a gym or come to a climbing gym or even outdoor climbing. It's very intimidating. But as soon as you, uh, as soon as you meet a couple of people, you realize that everyone's willing to help you out and um, everyone's kind of rooting for you to do well and to, to teach you how to do everything. So. I mean, even for somebody that, that's never been here before, if they walked in and you know, introduce themselves. I mean, they'd make a whole bunch of new friends when they came out here because everybody here likes to help other people and welcome new people into our sport. My climbing friends are some of my closest friends, even though I haven't necessarily known them as long as other friends in my life. I think the fact that when you're letting someone belay you, like, it's not just when you say you're trusting them with the, your life, you really are. It's not like, you know, a friend, oh yeah, I trust you with my life. Like, I really have shown that I trust you with that. And climbers, sometimes it's, hard to like find someone who understands why you're obs obsessed with like going climbing as other climbers. So. Um, and there's a bond between the climber and the belayer. So the belayer is the safety person and you go through a lot of things. And I have 
two main climbing partners that I've been climbing with since 1986. And uh, I just really enjoy their company. I enjoy sharing the stories and uh, it's really fun. Friends of mine that I've talked into trying out the sport have really enjoyed it. Um, there's, you know, there's some that have been, you know, they've become very hardcore climbers that, you know, they got to go out and climb, you know, ice every weekend during the winter and rock during the summer. And then there's others that, you know, if they climb once or twice a year, they're happy with it. People think I'm an adrenaline junkie, you know, people who don't know about climbing, they think all climbers are adrenaline junkies. And people are okay thinking that. I don't care if people think that I'm that way. I'm not. I, I mean, there's there's a rush involved, but it's not. You know, it's not an adrenaline rush. I'm not a I'm not a junkie looking for my next you know adrenaline high or whatever. There's days where I can't think why I am climbing. It's you know below zero. Your hands are frozen. Your feet are frozen. You can't swing your hands to save your life, and it's it's hard. But at the end of the day, it's worth it. So. Starting off being a young climber, you know, it was sort of about the thrill, you know, there was some thrill involved in it. And then as I climbed longer, then I really enjoyed the athleticism of it and, you know, kind of pushing the numbers and, and now I just really enjoy being, being outside, spending time with my family, spending time with my friends. Um, you know, getting some exercise, you know, those are the things that I enjoy not more now than when I first started. Um, so it's really, you know, it's really changed, you know. You get to areas that the average person will most likely will never see. So uh, to get away from you know busy work schedules and uh, you know have some peace and quiet during the weekend, you know get out of the city and and enjoy you know, the nice white snow and uh, the beautiful frozen waterfalls during the winter months. You know, it's a very isolating sport. You know you're out in the colder days where most people stay inside and to be outside feeling good about it with a few other close friends you know that's that's good if you look at a, a hundred foot tall vertical wall of ice and you know you're new at this that's a pretty daunting task to think about climbing something that high. Don't be afraid to just try it. Um, it looks a lot harder than it actually is. So you might be surprised at your, what your body is capable of. I plan on climbing until my body can't anymore. Um, there's a, obviously, as with any adventurous type sport, there's a feeling of accomplishment when you do it. I guess it's hard to describe. I mean, everybody feels something different, but you know, you, especially beginning in the season and things like that when you're not in quite as good a shape and you come out here and you start putting climbs together. I mean, you feel like you're doing something that other people aren't and it just makes you feel just a, uh, like you're living. <laughs> They dream about climbing. They spend their weekends climbing. Those are climbers, and uh, I think they get they climb for themselves and for a common reason. They like being outside. They like the challenge. Uh, they like the camaraderie that uh, these sports bring.
once you're out on the ice, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. You know, that's that's what it's all about. You know, for me, it's not about you know climbing gnarly things, which which I like to do, but it's um, I don't know. The accomplishment is climbing. It's getting to the top, I guess, is in the, the simplest form.